Welcome and welcome once again to that bookstore at Montebank Place in Conway for On the Same Page today. Author John T. Edge comes to us from Oxford, Mississippi with not one, but two books. We got a two for deal for you today, Fried Chicken, an American Story, and Apple Pie, an American Story. And not only is it just two books, each book is in itself a historical essay, a series of essays about culture. It's also a recipe book and it's also a travelogue. So a real value meal today on On the Same Page. John T. Edge is with us now. As we mentioned, he comes to us from Oxford, Mississippi, where he is the director of the Southern Foodways Alliance there at the University of Mississippi and also an author whose work you can see in Savar Magazine, also Gourmet Magazine, and a, a number of great books uh, written about the subject of food and the South and, and lots of... Uh, Lots of things that are... I, I want to say, first of all, thank you for being here, John. Oh, it's my pleasure. You're a much smaller man than I thought you would be. <laughs> Give me time. Give well, me I time. tell you what, you gallivant across the country eating fried chicken and apple pie for a job, you're, you're expecting a bigger guy, but you must, you must move quite a bit. Uh, these are slimming clothes. <laughs> so. right, well, i got to get me some of those right there. <laughs> Two books. I mean, how do you go into a publisher and, and sell them on, I'm going to do a, a book about fried chicken and one about apple pie. How do you get them to, well, to sign off on that? You, you sell them on the idea of iconic American foods, on the Americans, the Southerners, define ourselves at the table. And you say, these are books about food, but they're also about culture, about people. Um, these are books about fried chicken, but hopefully they reflect you know, this identity that, that we Americans have forged. And you say, sure, it's about fried chicken, and it's about great eating, but it's about more. Did you write the fried chicken book first? I did. I wrote the fried chicken book first. In a way, you know, you start in a place of comfort. You know, I was born and raised in Georgia, now live in Mississippi. I know fried chicken. I, I know it kind of in my bones, uh, to use a really bad pun. Um, but, um, and by the way, fried chicken without a bone ain't fried chicken. It has to chicken. have a bone. Yeah, you say yeah, that yeah. in the book. I, 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 what? Well, McNugget, the purpose... McNugget is not a fried chicken. It's not a fried chicken. But... You include uh, buffalo wings. Sure, it's got and a bone. It's, it's, it's got a bone, it's but it's not bone. fried. But it's, it's, so but no, no, it's fried. It's fried. Okay. A buffalo well, wings fried. Yeah. I mean, oh, a that's true right. Buffalo that's wings right. fried. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, there's right. some. There's some. There's some blasphemy out there that is baked, <laughs> okay. but there is a, a true buffalo wings fried. All right. So we, we define what fried chicken is, and how did you decide where you were going to go to run down the story of fried chicken? You start the book out by by uh, quoting another author. I said who who makes the statement that to understand fried chicken, you have to have been born and reared in the South. You start your book by saying, I'm throwing that out because I don't believe it. Where do you I, go from there? Well, I mean, as a Southerner, I think we spend a lot of times explaining ourselves. You know, you know we've got this, this, this peculiar and picaresque history. And, you know, we goofed up a while back, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, on multiple occasions, we mm -hmm. goofed up. Sure. And we spend all this time explaining ourselves. And I think in that explaining, we end up telling stories about ourselves that sometimes become kind of grandiose. And those stories envelop everything. You know, everything becomes Southern. And fried chicken is one of those. You know, uh, people of Chinese ancestry will argue until we're both blue in the face that, that fried chicken is as much theirs. Um, and I've met um, people all across the country in this kind of quest for fried chicken who argue fried chicken is theirs and is of their tradition. In Barberton, Ohio, I met a, I came upon this kind of enclave of four or five different restaurants that all cook fried chicken in a Serbian style, a very heavy breadcrumb coated chicken cooked in lard, just like we say we do, you know, cooked in deep lard, fried hard, served with nothing but salt, and served in, you know, alongside this kind of coleslaw-like stuff, along with something they call red rice, um, or they call hot sauce, which basically looks like red rice. It's this whole kind of subculture that fried chicken offers entree to. It's not just Southern. Yeah, you, you actually, actually you start the book out by taking us to New Jersey. Right. So we're, we're out of the South real quick. Do you make, yeah. is it, was that to make a point? It was to make a point, but I'm not denying my Southern roots. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a proud Southerner, um, and uh, much of the book deals with the South. But I'm saying expand your horizons, look beyond the South. Fried chicken matters to other people in other places. Great story from, I think it's West Virginia about uh, how fried chicken and the railroads and race, race and ethnicity sort of all came together. They, t tell us how that yeah, works. This is a small town in Virginia um, where these women would meet the rail cars at the station selling fried chicken, and they'd balance these, these um, trays of fried chicken on their heads. It's an early example in the 1800s, the late 1800s, of African-American entrepreneurial acumen. Um, and that's the way I think about it. You know, these are women making their way in the world. 
um, by way of fried chicken. You know, it was something they may have learned at the plantation manse and something that transfers over to freedom and becomes their step towards Americanness, towards assimilation, towards the American dream by way of fried chicken. You are really geographically inclusive in this book. You got a big West Coast swing out there for the, what was it, the chicken and waffles and the, the Honduran uh, sort of marinated chicken. Right. Still fried though, right? Is right, it, sure. I, okay. Gotta be fried. Gotta be fried or is it it's not in the book? Oven okay. fried too. <laughs> oven, I'm not messing with the oven fried. That's, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a dodge. Yeah, um, yeah. So the West Coast and the Korean chicken out there as sure. well. Sure. The Korean fried um, One of the things most fascinating, I think, on the West Coast is the, is the um, chicken and waffles phenomenon. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the place that's most heralded is a place called Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, uh, originally in Hollywood. And Roscoe's gets its riff, which is basically fried chicken served atop waffles. Um, and I prefer it with a little bit of syrup over the top and then over the, the whole of it and then hot sauce on the syrup. So you almost get a a Cantonese flavor, this kind of sweet and hot and sour all going on at the same time, but it's become kind of the dish of Hollywood, the dish of, um, you know, snootful Hollywood, you know, you mm -hmm. have a little snootful and you want a little Roscoe's. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's a late night thing. It is, but it ties back to the rural south. Um, yeah. I found multiple evidence of, of people that, that write about eating this dish of fried chicken and waffles as kind of a mid-morning treat in the south, and there's not that much distance between chicken and waffles and biscuits and chicken. You yeah. know, you know, it's just a ballast along with the chicken. And one, one of the one of the people you interview in the book sort of makes a uh, says that his philosophy of fried chicken is to, is to take a really nice piece of chicken meat and marry it to a really nice biscuit, getting that crust and that and that meat yeah. to, to come together. Yeah. And and the best chicken makers in, in your estimation are the people who can pull that off, right? Yeah, I think so. And and, and also the people that, that find either they're sticking with, you know, kind of the tradition hewn by their mother or they're doing something a little innovative. There's a particular chef that I love up in Tennessee, John Fleer, who um, at a place called the Inn at Blackberry Farm, who marinates his chicken in sweet tea for two days mm -hmm. and then fries it. And, you know, it's gossamer. I love the stuff. Yeah, and, and you recommend all, all the, uh, the, the, the marinating and the, the brining Right. At the end, and that's, that was one thing I wanted to ask you about. It seemed like you, you preferred the sort of rustic preparations more over the fancified stuff and a couple of re uh, uh, restaurants you sure. mentioned at the end were kind of the fancier versions of that. Which is it? Which do you like better? I, I, I like whatever's in front of me. I really do, <laughs> and I don't mean that as a politic answer. I like fried chicken prepared well. I think that people are realizing that some of the, the commercial birds, it's hard to wrench flavor out of them, so you end up marinating it for two days. You end up taking steps to do it, and expert cooks know how to wrench flavor out of something. All right. What's the best fast food fried chicken in America? Best fast food fried chicken that is available to everyone, yeah. I would say, is Popeye's. But I'd also counsel you, don't go spend your money with Popeye's. Spend your money with the local folks, because they need yeah. your money, and it stays in your community. I mean, that, I mean, that's voting. Your food becomes political at that point, and I think that's important. We spent more of our time on fried chicken, because I like fried chicken better than I like apple pie, but a lot <laughs> more people may like apple, apple pie. The phrase, as American as apple pie, Let's just start by, is there any validity to that? Sure, there is. I mean, this apple pie is a dish that was born of Great Britain, born of England, um, but it has become our own. You know, it is something that we've, we've, we've uh, kind of created in our own image. It's become a symbol of kind of the diversity and wealth and prosperity of America. There's this German economist who observed in the, in the early 1900s that um, on the shoals of roast beef and apple pie, socialistic utopias founder. And it's, it's grand language, but what he's saying is, how are you going to fight apple pie? If, if, if America's sitting down at the table at the end of the day to apple pie, how are you going to sell them on socialism or communism? Because everybody's prosperous in America. Everybody's eating apple pie. Eating the apple truth pie. is something else, but, but nonetheless, the idea is there that yeah. apple pie symbolizes something. It's the kind of the manna of prosperity right. and, and, and well-being, I guess. Right. I mean, yeah. that apple orchards are, are many and bounteous. I mean, think about Arkansas. You've got great apples here, mm -hmm. and so does almost every state. Apples are are grown in just about every state in the Union. So it's the thing that's out back down the road. It's the orchard that's down back, out back down the road that makes it accessible to people. A great, uh, I, I found it fascinating, was the fact that apples were grown in America in the early years. The, the early colonists grew them mostly to make Applejack, make whiskey out of it, right. right? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, this idea of Johnny Appleseed traipsing through the forest <laughs> to get you apples, he was going to get you drunk. Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. Good old Johnny, <laughs> what a guy. Well, and you're, you're, it's the similar format to the fried chicken book. You go on this sort of journey across America in search of 
not the best apple pie, but just what, what makes apple pie and what makes apple pie a part of America. You start with something called the Fruit Stand Death March in the state that's best known for apples, Washington right. State. And one of the things is I wanted to be honest about apple pie and about fried chicken in these books. You know, it's one thing to write a pay into apple pie, but it's another thing to be honest and say, you know, it's not always good. And I end up in Washington State saying, if most apples, if most of the apples in the U.S. are produced in Washington State, they should do the best job with apple pie. The reality is something a little bit different. Um, so I went out to say, if I showed up in a fruit stand in Washington State, they should have good apple pie. Truth was something else. I found great apple pie. I write about that. I give a recipe for it. But it wasn't so darn easy. Where the apples come from and, and the, the variety of them and the perceived quality of them, does that have anything to do with the goodness of the pie in the end? Yeah, it has very much to do. If, if you, I mean, there are a couple of recipes in here where I say, okay, this include two different kinds of apples, one for flavor and one for crunch, one for flavor, one for texture. Um, but I think the best advice for anybody making apple pie is find your apple and stick with it. If there's a local apple that's grown in Arkansas, an Arkansas black or something like that, stick with that apple and learn its qualities and keep adapting. You know, use that apple. Don't go get a Granny Smith from the grocery store. Use an Arkansas apple and then you can develop your own recipes, tweaking as you go and learning. Um, I think that's important. Cook local, cook, cook, um, cook what you know. Although, in your section on fried pies, you, the, one of the best pies you mentioned is made by a woman who uses dried apples out of a box from Walmart. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, she, it's a tradition that would have gone back to the days when her ancestors would have sliced up apples, put them on a tin roof to dry, or put them on a window screen to dry. And, you know, that's just not a process that, that, is, that is much adaptable to modern day. So she's getting the same or as close as she can get from a box of apples that came from Walmart, the, you know. The only really bad episode you seem to have is down at Disney, or a celebration for it, right next to Walt yeah, Disney World in Atlanta. Yeah. Bad pie experience. Down. Bad pie experience, crotchety writer me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I expect a lot out of people that bake pie. And my experience in Celebration Florida was that they were traipsing on the idea of, I mean, they were, they were treading upon the idea of apple pie. They, 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 they did not respect their pies and staged a faux contest and they made me mad. Mm. And I wrote about that experience. Um, mm. and, it, and it was, I've gotten better feedback on that chapter than anything I wrote because it's grumpy. And you know, apple pie doesn't always have to be about, um, about this, this kind of saccharine recollection of, of mom and apple pie. You know, if you make a bad apple pie, I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, and, and, the, and these people were, were, they made me mad. All right. Shouldn't, <laughs> right righteously got hammered for it. Good That's deal. Me. Should the reader, and now I'll ask this about the chicken book too, should you, should you read this book? Uh, all at once, or can you cut it up in pieces, so to speak? Can you, can you eat it a little bit, a little slice at a time? Um, I think you can digest this book as you go. It, it's something you can dip in and out of, um, and but you also can read it as a quest. I mean, for me, it really was a quest to come to find great pie, great fried chicken, but also to understand America by way of these foods. And I don't know, I was focused upon this book not being kind of food pornography, not being a recipe book, but this being, you know, a literary look at America by way of its food. And, you know, I don't want to frustrate people, so I include recipes so that they can, you know, vicari not only vicariously follow along, but truly follow along. I know these are the first two in a series. Indeed. Tell our audience what's coming up next. Um, I'd just like to say I have a book on burgers and fries that's out in July of 2005 and a book on donuts out in December of 2005. All right, we look forward to that. Thank you so much, John T. Edge, for being on our show today. Stick around. We'll be right back with our Arkansas readers to talk about these two great books. All right, here on On the Same Page, the two books we're talking about today, Apple Pie, An American Story, and Fried Chicken, An American Story, written by John T. Edge. And now we have our Arkansas readers here. I want to introduce them to you. First, to start with Angie Thompson, a friend of mine and a, a television program producer and creator. You see a lot of her work on ESPN. Max Brantley, you've read his work in the Arkansas Gazette for years and years. Now he is, he is the editor of the Arkansas Times. And Danny Grace is the department chair and professor of theater and uh, front man for the beloved Rockin' Guys musical oh, ensemble. <laughs> here in Laura, so we're, so we're happy to have all of you all okay, here today. You. Let's let's uh, which which book would y'all like to dig into first? Because I kind of went first with Fried Chicken when I talked to John T. I think we should start with Fried Chicken because sure. that's the one he did first, right? Yes, that's the one he yeah. wrote first. Let's well let's let's start with it. What were your expectations when you pick up a book that's purports to be all about fried chicken? Well, I I thought. I thought that knowing the background of the writer, I thought that there would be a little more Southernisms infused throughout the whole book, especially a, a book by a Southern writer about fried chicken. But I was pleasantly surprised at, that it wasn't really about 
the South and the, mm -hmm. the Southern culture of fried chicken, even though it was interesting to read it from a Southerner's perspective. Yeah. No, he, well, he tried to prove that fried chicken was about more than the South. Mm -hmm. I, th I think what he did prove is that fried chicken is intensely personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it is a certain woman who made chicken a certain way in my childhood. Mm -hmm. and. That's true, I think, throughout this book, whether it's somebody from the Dominican Republic or Honduras or China or wherever. I mean, mm -hmm. that's your personal experience to yeah. guide you. Danny, the, 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 the way he puts it together, this part travelogue, part recipes, you know, it's a good recipe book, isn't it's it? It's a what good recipe book. I've, you know, I've tried a couple, and um, I like the, <laughs> the, the travelogue aspect of it. The, the stories about the people are really interesting. Sometimes they're a little brief. You, you like to maybe hear a little bit more yeah. about them, more. but he moves on, and, and that's also good. There's a good pace in the book, and um, and he seems to be genuinely excited in, in this book about some of the things he finds, and, you know, in the apple pie book, he even admits it's not quite as much fun, so um, I enjoyed the fried chicken book. Yeah. Well, it's what? good, well, it's good stories. If, if there were criticism, the, the thing that I thought, and I thought it was true about pies both, is you can believe that it's easy to fry chicken or make a pie. And as simple as both of those things are, it's very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the key about frying chicken, and he tells you get a thermometer mm -hmm. yep. so you can measure your oil temperature, and that's really important. But if you don't do it right, it's not right. And some people just know, and, and right. some, some people don't. Mm -hmm. And it's not the recipe's fault. No, right. no, not, no. <laughs> you know? no, the recipes no, are no. perfect. One person right. makes something ethereal, the other person you don't want. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. When you read a nonfiction book, Angie, you know, you, you, you start putting together this composite impression of the person who's writing it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and here you've got John T. who's dashing all over the country and, and, and visiting all these people and doing this crazy research, you know, when he hits right. town and all these people. Well, what kind of uh, final image did you have of him? I know you got to meet him today, but before right. you met him, what kind of image did you Well, have it's him? interesting that you asked that because I kind of, as I was reading the book, I sort of put myself in his shoes, like, you know, how would I have approached this or how would I have talked to these people? Because he really did get some good stories out of people and did a lot of research in the local areas that I was very impressed with. So I kind of figured that he was a pretty gregarious person, but I kind of always, uh, I guess, in my mind pictured it as somebody that would probably have big parties in his house that would you know, where people would play loud music and, and but still have good conversation and eat well. I think he's still around. We'll have to ask him about yeah. that. <laughs> we got to talk about he, he, lo he loves food, and, and, and I've done a little bit of this kind of writing, not at the level he does it. And it, it's, I mean, if people read Jane and Michael Stern, Calvin Trillin, I mean, there's kind of an established genre on it. But I learned this when I was a kid in elementary school. If you show the cooks you appreciate the food, they love you. That's awesome. And they give you more. And then they might tell you about how they do what they do if you like it. And I think that's what he brings to it. The enthusiasm, I think, just makes people open up. Yeah. Yeah. Not all the cooks were willing to talk to oh, him, no, though, right? No, I mean, that oh, was no, stuff. he had to work on, on some of them. Some of them still didn't talk to him. But uh, I thought he kept a pretty good uh, um, attitude about that throughout the chicken book. He got a little bit down on the apple pie Yeah, book, yeah but, he, but he had some, he had but some but rough customers. I mean, this, this guy from Chicago. Yeah, that's, I want to go there. That's one of my favorite I mean, segments. No. You know, I want to eat that one, chicken, right? But this guy, he was a total fraud in some ways. I mean, he purported himself to be a great Italian chef and everything. He was from New Delhi. New Delhi. But it sounds like the chicken's good. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think I'll certainly use the book when I go places. I mean, you know, you're always looking for places to eat. Yeah. And you can always eat chicken. So, so you, you read, this is Chicken Michelin. This is the Chicken Michelin guy. Right Maybe here. so. This, this is yeah. it. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I, I, and he does I have Gus's can... fried chicken in there, so that's that's important to me. Now, is Gus's? Tell me, is Gus's in Memphis? Now? There's one in Memphis now. It, it was in uh, Mason, and okay. I don't even know if it's still there in Mason. Yeah. I, okay. it may but have there burned. is one in Memphis. But I've eaten, you can I've still eaten find at the Gus's real. I've eaten at the original one, and, and I've eaten at the one in Memphis too. And uh, you know, that's some fine fried chicken. Yeah. It's hard to beat it. Yeah. Arkansas is in the book. Doesn't get a good review, particularly one. Chicken restaurant in Springdale doesn't get it particularly good. Oh, that's right. It's yeah. mentioned in yeah. passing when he's looking for chicken that was fried and put on, on coals as well. Yeah, and and, and that, was, well. that was a bad idea. Nothing against that place. It. It's a good place, but you're right. That trying is a bad hard. idea. Yeah, yeah, that's trying too hard, and it doesn't, doesn't come off too well. Plus, he mentions, I have to mention the other Arkansas connection, a woman in Searcy, Searcy. who invented the chicken nugget. That's have you all heard, ever heard of this before? No. Never. You had not heard of that. No, 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 no. I had but never heard that. as he tells it, that's not necessarily something to be proud of, right? No, the, no, no. The chicken nugget? Yeah, yeah, chicken right. nugget. It's supposed nuggets. to have a bone. Yeah. It doesn't have a bone, That's so. one of the things I say I was really pleased that's right. when I got into this and this was going to be about chicken with a bone. Yeah. Because it's kind of important. <laughs> that's right. That, that's important. Any omissions, any glaring omissions, places he left out that you all would like to have seen? How about some place where you grew up in Alabama, Angie? I can't think of anything right offhand. And, of course, you know, I, I travel a lot and I've 
I have to say that fried chicken has not been high on the agenda mm -hmm. of when we've traveled around, but it might be now. You know, I mean, it certainly gave me a different appreciation for looking for the just right fried chicken. And, uh, and, the book was, and the book was great for somebody who travels because mm -hmm. you could just read little pieces of it, at, you know, in, in, in short periods of time, but still uh, stay interested in it as a, as a whole book. But I, I can't think of anything that's left out from Alabama. Okay. I think, I think he, he missed, from my point of view, something that, that if you ever saw the movie uh, The Soul Brothers, not... So, what am I Blues saying? Brothers. Blues, Blues Brothers. Brothers. Blues Brothers. Yeah, and sure. the chicken joint. Right, oh, yeah. I mean, the, the Chitlin Circuit, music circuit of black musicians, there was, in many of the places, Balls Tropicana was a nightclub in my hometown, had a chicken shack in the back, oh. and there was two pieces of chicken, whichever two came out of the pan, mm -hmm. and a couple of pieces of toast and from, some french fries for 39 cents. That's my childhood, mm -hmm. and I think that was typical. And so I kind of wish, because so much of what he writes about is sort of this tying into people and mm -hmm. places and and ethnic backgrounds. I wish I'd have seen that blending of music and chicken a little yeah, bit. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that, that would have been good. That's, that's a great point. And, but the, the, ethnic, the ethnicity part of it, the, the ethnic makeup of communities, how it ties to a certain dish, he really does a good job with that, I think. You do you all agree oh, or yeah, disagree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he left a place, out, and he may not have had an opportunity to eat there, but there was a fried chicken place in Waco, Texas called Leslie's Fried Chicken. It was dynamite. Oh. And I don't well, know. It may I not be there anymore. Well, I guess you can always revisit. Always. You can yeah, always second, go back. Fine. Again, we've short. No, we have <laughs> short, a short changed apple short pie. Changed apple pie. Let's talk about the apple pie book. It's a little bit different, and it's it's written just uh, with a little I, bit different point of view. Would you say, Angie? I agree. I thought if the, if I had one mild criticism of the book, it was that he used a lot of three dollar words in fried chicken, and that oh. seemed to not be as in, in apple pie. He seemed to be a little more comfortable in the writing style. You, you, there's a difference. Yeah, one, one oh, to I the definitely other. noticed. Yeah. Did, did you did you notice oh, that yeah, as well it's, too? It's, it's, it's a it's a different sort of of um, it's just it it just doesn't seem that he found he was finding what he thought he was going to find in the apple pie book the way he did early. It wasn't satisfying. Yeah. It wasn't it as wasn't satisfying, satisfying, and I don't know. It's this just, was another case where I I think you know he's got this construct. There's going to be an iconic food, yes. mm -hmm. and he's going to write about it. And, and it's true in chicken, too. Chicken is meat, some flour, and some fat. Mm -hmm. A pie is some flour, some fat, and some apples. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are other little things you can do, but you can't. There's only so much you can say it's after a while. Right. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's, mean, that's tough. I mean, yeah. you got red hots here, and, you know, you got the, the apple pie shake. Yeah. Which yeah, I don't know if that really should have been in there. You, it's really? I don't question know. Well, okay. yeah. apple pie shake. It sounded yeah. good to me. It, did, it, it does sound good. Like, oh, it, it, sounded, sound it sounded good. Larrapin, good. but, you know, it's a little bit of a But you tried the red pie. hot You made the, yeah, red hot. made the red hot pie. This, this is an apple pie that you cook with red, with hot red hots to provide the, the spices well, where you might put cinnamon in. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's, yeah. It's explained. And it was good. Yeah. Well, somebody else dumped a box of red hots in their pie. He yeah, oh, yeah. With oh, the cinnamon oh. flavored candy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. It was good. Which pie did, did you all want to try the most? Which one oh. really? The, the, the Senior hot pie? One. Yeah, I'm going to go out there. I'm, I'm going to have to get one of those this, pies. This is a pie made with green chilies, apple yes. pie and green chilies, a uh, New Mexico style mm -hmm. pie. I, I, that's, that's my favorite, so. too. Did you see one that really caught well, your eye? Well, actually, I wanted to make the red hot pie. Well, we should have brought over. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring it. I was anxious to try that. The red hot yeah. pie, Max? Uh, the boiled cider pie sounded oh, yeah. interesting yeah. From, from Vermont. Yeah, the boiled cider pie. Hmm. I knew nothing about boiled cider. Yeah, you because that was new. That was new. Yeah. Do you do the restaurant reviews for the Arkansas uh, Times Magazine? Some of them. Sometimes, because uh, they're largely unsigned. Right, they're all unsigned, so yeah, we're going to be anonymous. I do some. Okay. How hard is it, is it to write about food? I mean, it's, it's, it's super subjective. Yeah. It's, hard. it's hard if it's not good. Yeah. Or, if the food's or, not good. Or, or if it's just mediocre. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's just, when you really love something, it's very easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I write about Sims Barbecue, it's easy. There yeah. you go. <laughs> All right. If you don't like apple pie, and I, I, I'll confess to not being the biggest apple pie fan in the world, would, would you like the book? Would you say? You oh, like I it? think so. Because yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a huge apple pie fan either. But again, if you just like good storytelling, I think there is a good storytelling in, in those in the books, either whether you're a fan of the food or not. Does Arkansas get mentioned in this apple pie book? Does Arkansas come up in that? I, not really. No, I, I, don't I don't think we No, and there used to, I was wondering if there used to be a famous pie place up at Green Forest or that had apples grown nearby, and I don't know if they still do. Mm -hmm. Any any omissions in this book? We talked about omissions in the fried chicken book. Any places left out that you all would like to see? Any any sort of you know, I don't know as much about apple pie as I know about <laughs> yeah, fried chicken. Yeah, right. You, you know, know it's big a connoisseur, right? No, but um 
Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be I'd be interested in trying some more of the recipes. You know, for a person who likes to, to read about food and who likes to then, then cook up some of that, I think these are really a mm -hmm. good idea. They, they're great. They're really accessible. I mean, there's not anything hard to get or. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm making dough, you know, that's that, that's tough. that's that's the big deal. I mean, you know, making crust. That, that works. Now, that, there was, there, I didn't know about flake. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. short. The length lard of flake. is better. Yeah. And lard is lard better. Is better. Lard is Cut better. in with butter and and cold fingers seemed oh, to yes. seem to be the deal. Where do you that get was the lard? You, just <laughs> you get it at the, the store. store. They have a store. Oh, yeah. It's right there. It's in a block right uh, on the shelf. You know, don't so look in your refrigerator case. We're so for preconditioned it. to not, you know, to stay away from the lard that I don't even know where it's located. All right, Angie Thompson, thank you so much for being with Max Brantley. Great job, Danny Grace. As always, thank you for your insights. These books again: Fried Chicken, an American Story, and Apple Pie, an American Story by John T. Edge, and still to come: Hamburgers and French Fries and Donuts. We'll look for those two from this offer. Thank you for being with us today on On the Same Page. John, we mentioned at the top of the interview that you're in town here in Conway working on the Oxford American, which I should mention is put together and published here in Conway, Arkansas. Now, the food issue, and that's coming out when? It's out in April of 2005, and um, this is the first time for the OA to, to look at food from multiple perspectives, food poetry, food reportage, food kind of odes. I mean, there's everything from Paget Powell on ice and buffaloes um, to Eugene Walter on figs to... Um, to uh, a piece of reportage on the chicken industry and an Hispanic population here in, in uh, Arkansas. It's a, I mean, it's kind of a, a banquet of the South by way of food and good writing.